Welcome back to Going Bush. Not coming to you today from Middle Earth, but from North East New South Wales, where there's a very unique forest industry, because this is where the tropics meet the temperate. It's where life flourishes. North Eastern New South Wales is one of the most biodiverse areas in all of the country with eucalypt forest and rainforest all sharing the landscape. It's little wonder so much attention needs to be given to the environment. It's a great place to work. It's one of the most biodiverse places on the east coast of um, Australia. It's a, there's, um, it's a collision of worlds and where the, uh, the subtropical north meets the, the temperate south and uh, as well as off the coast, on the coast, you have that mixing of um, the, the plants and animals and the features that go with it. Before any harvesting takes place, teams of ecologists are on the ground searching for information. And with over 300 endangered plants and animals in the area, there's plenty to look for, making forestry in the area a complex business. We have a very rigorous uh, licensing system that we work underneath and uh, we have to meet some very um, stringent rules um, and th that means a, a wide range of surveys across a wi wide range of areas. In managing the production forests up here, um, in, the environment is imperative. You know, we, we, uh, we put a lot of effort um, and half of our staff are, are devoted to environmental aspects. So annually we find upwards of four to 5,000 threatened animals and um, over 10,000 threatened uh, plants plant species in, in our region that we incorporate into our harvesting plants and hence the harvesting operation. So they're, they're protected uh, during the harvesting event. Some of the species which ecologists are looking for include koalas, different kinds of frogs, small mammals such as the Hastings River mouse and even rare and endangered bats. Now part of that uh, survey is for bats of all things which surprised me Brian and this is the bat trap mate, how does, how does it work? Yeah, this is the bat trap. Um, it's a harp trap. It uh, looks a bit like a harp, got the strings there. Yeah, so it's got a fishing line here. That's right, and the bats fly along these flyways, and if you've set it right, they'll hit that, fall into the bag, and tomorrow morning we'll come and check it and see what we've got. OK, well, it's, we'll let the bats come out and do their thing, and uh, we'll come back in the morning. They're not vampire bats, are they? No, hopefully not. Not in Australia. All right, well, the sun's come up and we have got bats like you promised and it's not the fearsome blood-sucking thing I was expecting. What is this little fella? Uh, this little fella is a little forest bat, um, reasonably common around here. Uh, and, yeah, we've got a bat, bat full trap of them. We have indeed. Now, why are you surveying bats? What's the point? Uh, two points. Uh, one is to look for the more rare bats that are uh, around um, to, so we can manage them correctly and put in the protection measures that are required and also it's a bit of a measure of the forest health. Now I can't pat him, can I, because I haven't had my rabies shot. That's, that's right, you don't really want to get too close. No, I'll go over here. Once the survey in the forest is done, planners back in the office work with the information to devise specific rules about which areas can and can't be harvested. It's extremely complicated and our harvesting contractors are very specialised and skilled in what they do. They're not only considering their machines, the log products that they're producing, they've all got to, also got to consider the environmental aspects and where they can and can't go and all the rules associated with that. The forests around the area are all multi-aged because they have been harvested continuously for more than 100 years. The products that come out of them are mostly high-end, things like poles, bridge girders, veneers and appearance grade saw logs. And in New South Wales, native forests are harvested selectively and not clear -filled. So Justin, we've got a couple of nice black butt poles there, what, what would they be used for? Yeah, well these are telegraph poles, Craig, um, and we've got a 12 metre pole here and then a 14 metre pole. Um, We've got a little bit of shatter here, which may be an issue, but um, that should be able to get trimmed out. Um, and I guess with poles, what you're looking for is a good straight tree and just having that quality and minimal defect running along so it doesn't fail when it's in the ground as a telegraph pole. 
commercially our customers are telling us they, they handle up to 29 different species just from the local forests. Now that's, that's difficult for them to market actually, um, given that they have to find a, a marketing angle and a lot of them sell their products by species. They actually sell it as a black butt or a spotter gun because that's what people want. We we're working with the forest and understanding the ecology of the forest to get natural regeneration. We're not planting, we're just letting nature do it and we're maintaining the forest as it is for future generations. The other thing to bear in mind about these beautiful forests in northeast New South Wales is they're free to everyone to come and use. This is the latest edition. It's brand new. It's Sealy Lookout, giving you a beautiful vista of Coffs Harbour. The northeastern New South Wales region is one of four native forestry regions in the state and comprises more than half a million hectares of native forest and over 300 threatened fauna and flora species. A majority of that forest has been harvested for more than 100 years with forests New South Wales leaving habitat and protection buffers for any endangered species its ecologists find. Forests in the area are multi-use with events including the World Rally Championship visiting the area and are free for anyone to enjoy. Now coming up after the break, a trip down memory lane that will make your OH&S supervisor quake in fright. 